Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, we have a This Year in Perfume, and we are all the way to the year 2006, which is crazy to think that we're this far ahead uh, in, this, in, this, in this list of uh, videos that I've been doing, talking about fragrances that are released in a certain year in my collection. I think it's a cool way to talk about a lot of different perfumes. Uh, 2006 is kind of the last final year of innocence for me, as I would say, baby ram. Uh, in 2006, because I was still at the university then, one of my last years at the university, last couple years at the university, um, and I think once you have to start paying mortgages and property taxes and all that good stuff and uh, do your own taxes, you can't be on your parents' taxes anymore, you know, all that good stuff, You really, that's when life really truly starts to beat you down. But uh, 2006 was one of my final free years, I could say, of just doing whatever I want, not worrying about mortgage payments and stuff like that. Uh, fun times, fun times for Baby Ram at the university. Um, but 2006 is also a hell of a year in perfume. I must admit, there are 16 fragrances in my collection we're going to discuss and three honorary mentions. Uh, but first, let's put ourselves in the specific headspace of what was going on in the year 2006. Let's take us back to those days. So some things that happened. Um, for those of you who are my age in their late 30s, this will instantly take you back. Nintendo releases the Wii console. I remember my buddy Michael calling me at 3 a.m. and saying, dude, get down here to the Target. They have Wii consoles. We have to wait in line to get them. And sure enough, we did. We waited from 3 a.m. to like 8 or 9 whenever they opened. Uh, and we got one of the early Wii consoles when it first came out. It was priced at $250. Uh, and uh, definitely I remember playing the Wii Sports and all that stuff. Um, and so, yes, def instant brings me back, uh, to, to those days. And, uh, Google buys YouTube. That's also pertinent, I guess, to what we're doing here on YouTube. Uh, NASA launched the New Horizon probe. A lot of oil reserves found in, in the, um, um, oil shale reserves in Green Basin River. And, um, what else happened? Uh, I think there were... Uh, what was I going to talk about? Something happened here that I thought was worth mentioning. Uh, oh yeah, Italy won the World Cup. That was 2006. That'll instantly bring you back. Um, Barry Bonds broke the, uh, Babe Ruth home run record. I remember that. And then, of course, I remember all the steroid accusations afterwards. And, um... Yes, there was a heat wave in California. Okay, so let's talk about movies and songs, because that's also a great way to bring people back to, um, to what was going on. My all-time favorite movie from 2006 was definitely The Departed, hands down. That's my favorite, no doubt about it. Second runner-up is probably Borat. I really like Borat. I think it's a hilarious movie. Uh, other movies that took place in, in the year 2006, there was um, Pan's Labyrinth, Children of Men, Little Miss Sunshine... Um, there was The Lives of Others, uh, United 93, Paprika, Casino Royale, that was a good one, probably third, third place, uh, The Host, and, um, The Science of Sleep, The Illusionist, Pre The Prestige, The Fall, um, Notes on a Scandal, Little Children, Apocalypto, that was 2006, uh, well, all of these are, of course, or I wouldn't be mentioning them, but, but the best one to end with for this channel is Perfume, the story of a murderer. So I need to watch that. Everyone, people keep telling me you need to watch that, Ramsey, so it's on the list. Uh, and then songs, I just did top 10 songs, so don't crucify me for these, but Bad Day by Daniel Powder, uh, Gold Digger by Kanye West, How to Save a Life by The Fray, I Write Sins, Not Tragedy, Panic at the Disco, Sexy Black by Timberlake, Dirty Little Secret, All American Rejects. Hips, Hips Don't Lie, Shakira, featuring Wyclef Jean, Jesus Take the Wheel, Carrie Underwood, Feels Good by Gorillaz, and um, Too Little Too Late by Jojo. So, I just did top 10 songs of 2006, so if there are others that you want to shout out, you can shout them out in the comments. Okay, so let's do Scent of the Day, and then we will get into this. So, Scent of the Day is uh, going to be this little bad boy. This is Danger, Parfum Poron by Roja, and I really like wearing this. But it's probably the Roja that is the closest to a Guerlain. There are some Rojas that are very close to Guerlain. But this is so unbelievably striking close to Heritage, which in my opinion is one of the great Guerlains of all time because it's a genius creation, hearkening back to all of the beautiful heritage of Guerlain um, and putting little breadcrumbs into Heritage that remind you of old Guerlains. It's beautiful. Uh, everything is a work of art with that fragrance. And... Um, 
this fragrance really feels like Roja ran away with the Guerlain cookbook and then just changed a couple things and put it out, put out for 50 mils for $500. But I enjoy wearing it. That's, I do enjoy this fragrance. That's the thing. But I also enjoy Heritage. So it's very hard to justify $500 for 50 mil. Um, but we will do a full review of this very soon. Maybe I'll wear it again tomorrow and do the full review tomorrow. But I do, I do really like this. Um, Danger by Roja. Okay. So let's do some samples, some honorary mentions that are not on the list, and then we are going to get into the main top 16. So the first one is Tom Ford's Black Orchid. I'm not going to tell you what this is supposed to smell like. If you don't know, figure it out on your own. But uh, there's this black truffle note that's in here that's also in Tom Ford Extreme for men, both created by Pierre Negrin. Interesting, just little side note. So this is technically a floral oriental. It's not my favorite, so I have a little sample, not a bottle. But um, I, enough for me to do a review of Black, Black Orchid one of these days. That's the Eau de Parfum. And then a very popular Guerlain fragrance, um, which was created by the great Anique Minardo in 2006. This is called Bois de Harmony. So Bois de Harmony is um, sort of uh, woody, spicy. It's got frankincense and iris. Some people compare it to Bois d'Argent, which she made for Dior in 2004, a couple years before this. But this also adds more warmth of like benzoin and copiba balsam and stuff like that. There's some um, spicy sort of translucent coriander, I guess you could say, with gaiac wood, patchouli, and white musk. Um, it has a little more of that guerlainade in the base, I think. Uh, it's a little more, uh, I want to say, present than uh, Bois, Bois d'Argent. But um, I actually really like this. I, I would totally own a bottle of this if money was no issue, even though it is sweet. I like the richness of it. Okay, and then finally, the Guerlain that no one is asking for a review for, but I'll do it one day anyways. It's from uh, Jean-Paul Guerlain from the year 2006. This is called Mayotte. Oh, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Mayette, Mayotte. Uh, Mayotte, Mayotte is um, floral, sweet, green notes, frangipani, tuberose, jasmine, neroli, ylang-ylang, sandalwood, vetiver, and vanilla. Um, really beautiful fragrance. Not my thing, but I will talk about it and review it one of these days. I think that is discontinued. All right, so let's get into this top 16, if we will. So remember, I'm going to remind everybody that um, this is just my personal opinion today, December 23rd, 2023. Ask me tomorrow. My opinion can change. Um, so I'm not saying one's better than 16. I'm not saying two's better than 15. And again, this is just my opinion. It's just a fun way to talk about a lot of different fragrances. Is in a lot of people learn about a lot of different fragrances by these videos. And I think when you bunch fragrances together by the year they were created, you can see what the houses are thinking. You know, they're going against each other. They're competing with each other. And so this is a kind of a neat way to just discuss a lot of different fragrances. So number 16 on the list. Deserves to be higher. It's not fair. Something has to be at number 16. And this is where this one ended up. This is called Vintage by Jean Varvatos. Now, this is a good fragrance, okay? I am not going to bash this just because it's 16. Actually, we're gonna spray some of these because you know what? I am in a celebratory mood. And it is uh, Christmas almost, so let's let's spray some of these bad boys. And I got a shitload of blotters, so why not? Um, vintage. Great name for a fragrance. And um, so this is created by Rodrigo Flores Rue, who, as many of you know, um, created some amazing fragrances on a budget for the house of John Varvatos. This is kind of a spicy, leathery. Yeah, it's really good, you know? The um, juniper berries adds a little bit of a fizziness to the opening when you first spray. There's some white lavender in the top and fir balsam and patchouli. The patchouli is... Slightly herbal, not super scratchy, but it's definitely present. You can feel you can feel the thickness of it. Jasmine, suede, tobacco, and tonka. I mean, I hate putting this at number 16 because this easily could be so much higher. It's just that every time I wear it, I kind of get this a little bit like this lightning bolt to the head. You know, this fragrance kind of does that to me sometimes. Um, I don't know if it's the sweet notes or what, but there's something in here that's just a little... A little strange, uh, but I actually really, really like it. And um, this is one of the older EA bottles. It's now marketed by Revlon. I have no clue if there's been changes. I, I honestly don't know. But um, yeah, for the worst, or I shouldn't say the worst, but the number 16 fragrance on the list this is a hell of a fragrance. Okay, 
So John Barbados Vintage by Rodrigo Flores Ruiz at number 16. Number 15. Number 15 is a fragrance from the house of Prada. And this is another one that I hate putting here because I think this is a really good fragrance. And one of these days I'll review it. If you want to watch a great review in the meantime, I would urge you to check out my brother Rich Mitch's review. Um, this is Prada Amber Pearl at number 15. And you can see the note listing right there. I would urge you to get the older Made in Spain bottles if you can. Apparently the new Made in France versions are not as good from what I hear. I don't know that for a fact, but that's just rumor around the campfire. Um, Prada Amber Pour Homme is a creation by Danielle, Daniela Andrier. And this is kind of a powdery, very, very fresh, slightly translucent um, fragrance that uses notes like myrrh and vetiver to add a little bit of heft to it. Yeah, that powdery freshness, you know, it's very hard, I think, to do powdery fresh fragrances well because it can very easily go into the laundry detergent aspect. And this walks right up to that line because Prada does soapy fresh fragrances very well. If you're a fan of soapy fragrances, you actually can't go wrong with Prada. You know, Prada... Um, Rich Mitch said in his review, I think he said, this is what a woman would imagine like a man who, a woman who wants to imagine what a man would smell like if a man smelled soapy clean. And that's a spot on, 100% spot on. Um, I like that there is some hefty notes though. It's not just soapy clean. And this could easily climb the ranks the more I wear this. Um, but for right now, you know, this, this lands at number 15. There's some bangers on this list is the problem. There's some amazing fragrances to come. But, you know, the cardamom, the um, myrrh is definitely present. The myrrh adds a little bit of that fungal sort of warming quality. Um, a little earthy, you know? There's like this earthiness with the vetiver and the myrrh and the labdanum and the leather and the saffron. But it still remains powdery and fresh and uh, soapy. Beautiful. One of, probably one of the best done soapy fragrances. It's just, you know, when I think about, man, what do I want to wear today? Hardly ever, if never, am I like, I want to smell soapy. You know, it's just not something that, but I guess if you want to go to work and you don't want to offend some, those people, those people, you don't want to offend your workmates, um, this is not a bad fragrance to wear. It just never, never excited me. Maybe I need to wear it some more. But, um, but yes, Prada Amber Pour Homme number 15. Number 14 is a discontinued Pierre Bourdon. I've got a mini. Uh, I've got a 7 mil mini, and this is from the house of Gianfranco Ferre, which I love saying that. Gianfranco Ferre, that's a powerful name, or just Ferre. Uh, this is Ferre for men. Um, now, this is the 2006 version, obviously. Uh, there is a 1986 version, I think, which I'll review. One of my favorite uh, Gianfranco Ferres of all time is, is Gianfranco Ferre for man. This is Gianfranco Ferre for men, just in case you weren't confused enough. And um, this is a Pierre Bourdon creation that came out in 2006. And what came out in 2005 that was such a big hit? Dior Homme. Uh, and I told you in that video, even though Dior, Dior Homme made number two, it was behind L'Enstant de Guerlain for me personally. Uh, and that's a tough call, because ask me now, and I'm like, man, maybe Dior Homme should have been number one. But um, Dior Homme was definitely the more influential of the two fragrances. And Dior Homme uh, influenced many fragrances in the future. This is prime example. So this basically is a floral woody iris, like a powdery irisy lavender fragrance. But this fragrance has something very interesting in the top that Pierre Bourdon started to do over and over and over and over and over in the early 2000s. And if you've been watching my videos, you know what that is. That is using pineapple. Uh, before his, his uh, protege, Jean-Christophe Hérault, put pineapple in Aventus and it became a phenomenon, Pierre Bourdon was using pineapple in these throwaway fragrances no one was talking about, really. And this is one such fragrance. You know, it's like Dior Homme, beautiful iris with iris leaf. There's black iris in here, iris, uh, and pineapple in the top with bergamot, lavender, geranium, rose, Egyptian jasmine, orange blossom, musk, oak moss, sandalwood, tonka bean, ambergris, patchouli, vanilla, and vetiver. And does Pierre Bourdon make a bad fr fragrance? I mean, uh, I think this is very underrated. I wish I had got a bigger bottle instead of just a mini, 
but um, I do really like it and I will review it one of these days, one of these days, probably when it gets warmer. Um, this is a fresh, a fresher, like a fresher take on Dior Homme, you know? Okay, next on the list is a Histoise de Parfum, and this is at number 13, and this is a partial that I will review before the juice is all gone. This is Histoire de Parfum 1969. This is a very interesting fragrance because this is basically a sort of like a fruity, um, like a fruity, sweet, floral fragrance with chocolate and coffee and patchouli and white musk in the base. So even though it's unisex, that sort of peach, fruity, floral thing probably leans feminine for most folks. But if you give it time, that coffee when it comes out in patchouli, very interesting. Um, and that chocolate note in the base. Um, let's see. It's been a while since I've smelled this. Yeah, it's um, it opens up very feminine and sweet. But it dries down to more of a spicier coffee with the patchouli and chocolate. I think it's an amazing fragrance. And I actually think... This is an amazing house, very underrated house. I have more reviews to do of this house for sure. And this is one of them. Um, Sylvette Jord Jordet, or Jordet, excuse my French. Sorry, it's not Sylvette, it's Sylvie Jordet, or Jordet, or Jordet, I don't know. Um, and Gerard Giselain is the creative director uh, and owner of this house, I believe. But yeah, it's... You know, it's kind of one of those scent pro profiles that I, I, I have come to sort of enjoy smelling. I enjoy what it does. Um, that floral peachy thing, I think some guys might just go, nope, not for me, but give it a chance because it dries down to a very interesting coffee patchouli chocolate. Yeah, very um, sort of uh, attractive fragrance, you know? Okay, next on the list is number 12, and this is probably uh, the holidays in a bottle for most men, and I, I absolutely love this. I think it's one of the better designers Burberry ever put out, um, and many people associate this with Christmas time or Thanksgiving or things like that, holiday gatherings. This is Burberry's London. So, of course, London with its little coat here. Um, and London is basically a fragrance that, for a designer, pretty um, unique, I would say, for a designer. I've got two bottles of this stuff. And I, I just, God, I love this. You know, it is... Um, so what makes it so interesting is instantly you get this peppery cinnamon thing mixed with leather and port wine. And the port wine note stands out. I mean, it just stands out front and center. It's spicy, it's woody, there's a little bit of lavender that adds this traditional masculine feel to it. And then it dries down to a tobacco. So like yesterday, when I was talking about Hugo Boss number one, I was saying, you know, that combination of honey and tobacco and when it's done in, in an all-star fashion like Hugo Boss number one, go watch my Vintage Hall of Fame review if you haven't. Um, that, you know, that combo is just a killer combo. But as it turns out, tobacco and port wine is also a killer combo. I mean, what do you want to do after you've had a couple glasses of wine? You probably want to smoke something. And for many guys, it's a pipe or it's a cigar. Or if you smoke cigarettes still, it's a cigarette or whatever it is. Um, and then there's this Apopanax, which is sweet myrrh, oak bark, and guyac wood, which adds a little bit of smokiness. For a designer, I mean, there's only so much you can ask for from these designer houses. And I really think Burberry for men, L sorry, Burberry's London for men, checks a lot of these boxes. That port wine note is just, it's its so well done. And it's sweet without being too sweet. It's just slightly sweetened, you know? Just ever so slightly sweetened. Uh, but mostly spicy and woody and tobacco-y and port wine-y and leathery and... Uh, with that peppery lavender in the top. It's beautiful. Very well done by Antoine Maisandu. Probably, um, probably one of his best. 
I mean, Beau de Jour is good, but I would just wear Zeno. That's why I don't own a bottle of Beau de Jour. He also did the um, Bottega Veneta Pour Homme, which I would like to smell one day. And um, he did Fat Electrician, which might that might be my favorite um, creation by him. But yeah, I mean, he's a good perfumer. You got to hand it to him. So London for Men by Burberry's. Okay, next on the list, we have number 11. And number 11 is probably one of the best incense fragrances in my collection. And it is a brilliant incense. It's from the house of Healy, and it is called Cardinal. And Cardinal is exactly what you would expect. It literally smells like a cardinal walking up and down the Catholic Church. You know, they take that incense burner and they just, you know send the smoke to the sky. That is really what Cardinal reminds me of. Um, there's a linen note in here, which is interesting because it's almost like you can smell his, you know, red robe as he passes along with this peppery frankincense. There's a little bit of myrrh, mostly frankincense, uh, but frankincense and myrrh, I mean, killer combo. And James Healy doesn't do bad fragrances either. He's a house I need to dive into more. I need to smell more Healy's, but if you like Avignon, if you like those kind of perfumes, I would I would definitely recommend trying Cardinal, a churchy, proper church incense with what they say is vetiver, ambergris, and patchouli in the base. I don't know if uh, Healy uses real ambergris or not, but um, I, I, I am a fan. I, I definitely am a fan of Cardinal, and apparently the older bottles look like this. The newer bottles have this sort of like sticker going around it. The... the um, Writing is the same, except Eau de Parfum is, is right here, instead of just Cardinal, instead of Cardinal Cardinal, because it technically says it twice right there at the top on the older bottle. On the newer bottles, it says Cardinal Eau de Parfum, Healy, it's got this sort of cross right here, and um, it looks like there's a sticker that runs all the way around it, and inside of the sticker is white, and then you see the clear bottle. So just a quick little Healy um, history lesson. Okay, uh, next on the list we have number 10, and number 10 is a Parfum d'Empire, and this is called Queer Ottoman. So, basically like Ottoman leather, and Queer Ottoman is, um, is an iris, it's basically an iris leather, is the way that I would describe it, okay? But, um, you know, if you've heard me talk about some of these leathery iris fragrances like Roja's Great Britain, that's a very expensive leather iris, but you don't want to pay that kind of money. This is almost like the budget version of that. But to be fair, this is a good fragrance on its own, but um, it, it's it's more powdery than Great Britain. So it definitely has that pow the, a little more powdery side to the iris. You can see how popular iris was in 2006. Uh, Dior Om just set the iris world on fire, but it's iris, labdanum, and jasmine, and you will get the iris and the jasmine in the beginning. The labdanum tends to come through more as it dries down, along with beautiful benzoin, tolu balsam, leather, tonka bean, frankincense, and vanilla. But for me, this is a spicy, leathery iris um, with that sort of leather iris combo, basically, right? And it's beautiful. The only big problem with this is it really doesn't last, at least not on me. And this is an Eau de Parfum, I believe. Yeah, Eau de Parfum. It really doesn't last. I mean, I feel like by hour five, I'm ready to reapply. You know, it really gets soft on me, on my skin. I would love to smell the vintage, but um, i that's the one that I have. So, Queer Atoman by Parfum d'Empire at number 10. Number nine is an Uncle Serge in a discontinued, well, this particular bottle is discontinued. They've moved it to this different collection, which uh, I forgot what that collection is called, but the bottles look completely different than this. The bottles look, what is this collection called? Um, it's called the Les Let O de Polite, de Polite Collection. So the Polite Collection, I, I don't know, but it's in the bottle that looks more square with the sort of clear. The cap looks like the cap on the, um, I don't know if you can kind of make out the cap right there on the top of my Borneo 1834 bottle, but but clear, okay? And, and, the, and the bottle's clear and white and, and square. Um, if you look up this fragrance, you'll see both, both versions, but this particular version is discontinued. This is the vintage version in the, um, older packaging. This is called 
Grease Claire. And Grease Claire is um, basically a very fresh lavender, beautiful fresh lavender. Woody spices come through, iris comes through. So again, you can see what Dior Ohm did to the, to the game. Totally uh, changed it. And um, I think that uh, for a fresh take on, on iris, uh, this is really, really beautiful. And of course, I mean, it's a, um, this is a, a Christopher Sheldrake. So, I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong with the Christopher Sheldrake creation. Oh yeah. It's just, you know, there's a little bit of that lavender that reminds you of Carol's Pour One Ohm just for a little bit. And then it starts to go away and you start to get more of the tonka bean, frankincense, amber, the woodiness, and of course that beautiful iris that makes it feel so modern. If you're a fan of the lavender in Caron's Pour Uno, which I am in the vintage bottle, I would definitely urge you to try Gris Claire. Beautiful woody floral iris lavender. The lavender is so soft, just pillow soft, almost like cottony, you know? Man, Christopher Sheldrake is such a beautiful perfumer. Okay, next on the list, we have a creation by Nathalie Lorsen and Daphne Bugy uh, of Fermaniche. But I, I basically credit this to Nathalie Lorsen because uh, this reminds me of her other work. And uh, like I said, this is a really hard year for me to rank because I really love so many of these fragrances. But uh, And I haven't uh, reviewed any of them is what's crazy. But um, this is from the house of to do side -y. and this is called Inside Man. And so look at the inside of that bottle. It almost looks like a snake skin, you know, or like a leather shoe or belt or something. Beautiful leather wallet. Um, so Trusardi Inside is um, a fragrance that I really rate, even though it's sweet. And but basically what this does is, is this takes this beautiful Japanese yuzu opening, which I wish more people used different fruits like yuzu or different citruses like yuzu instead of just the usual bergamot. There is some Sicilian bergamot in here, but it's mostly this green smelling yuzu. Very tart. And it sort of links it up with this um, very unsweet tobacco. So think about something like, um, um, think about something like a Italian espresso. And then you're hit with this, um, the, the coffee bean, basically this, um, ground coffee bean espresso feel with this unsweet tobacco. So it's like having a unsweet, uh, espresso with like a cigarette or something like that very peppery. You get a lot of this pepper, which I know Nathalie Lorson loves to use. And there's a note of teak wood in here. Now, there's also a cashmere wood in here, but the cashmere wood is done, I would say, just as well as cashmere is used in much more expensive fragrances. Like, for example, I, I reviewed Roja's H, the exclusive black tier. There's a huge amount of cashmere in there. Um, you know, there's a lot of cashmere in some of the Frederick Malls. This is the cashmere in here is used to perfection. Unfortunately, it's discontinued. You know, that's the sad part is um, these bottles are very hard to come by, but I really rate Inside Man for a designer. And again, just like I was talking about Prada Amber Porom, just like I was talking about Burberry's London, there were some good designers in 2006, and this is one of them. Really like Trasardi Inside Man. Okay, really good tobacco sort of... Um, coffee. Okay, next on the list we have a fragrance that many of you may rank as your favorite. This is not my favorite, but it's grown on me, okay? And uh, this is the most, maybe one of my favorite bottles in my collection because it is a 500 mil with a sprayer that actually works. Uh, um, this sprayer, most 500 mils are decants, you know, there's no sprayer on a 500 mil. You know, it's hard, and I have pretty big hands, and it's hard for me to spray this damn thing. I've got to like lean it against myself and eh. Um, but um, this is Terre, Terre Hermes, the legend. And this is one of the older bottles. The reason I went for the 500 mil um, and it was a good deal as far as value for money goes. I think I paid uh, less than $300 or something for this. 
And these are these 500 mils are discontinued now as well because again they were in the older versions. And um, so Tear, of course, is the fragrance that put Hermes like in the spotlight. You know, Hermes was always sort of uh, for the elites, right? Regular people didn't wear Hermes fragrances. That was for the elites. They were they wanted to be seen as an elite brand. They wanted to be seen as normal people don't wear us. You know, we are for the upper crust of society. Um, that's why they would not let you buy their bags without working your way up. You couldn't just go into a, an Hermes store and say, give me a Kalesh bag or give me a Kelly bag. You know, uh, nope. They would say, nope, sorry. Um, you have to work your way up to that, which always amazed me. Like you could walk in there with a hundred grand and say, I want to buy this. And they'd say, no, well, you have to buy other stuff first. Go buy the socks, go buy the wallets, go buy the, uh, the, you know, mittens, go buy all the other fun stuff. And then we'll let you buy the Kelly bag or whatever you want, the Birkin. Um, and, but this basically is vetiver. This is basically a dirty orange vetiver with like a flinty note in there. So it's like this flint, uh, metallic, iso -E super, um, patchouli, peppery. There's geranium leaf in here. There's a little bit of benzoin, but it's mostly like a woody, earthy, um, sort of, you know, dirty orange vetiver is really what this is. People love this stuff. Uh, some people call it the greatest Jean-Claude Elena, which I can't believe, but uh, I, it has grown on me. Let's put it that way. And I also like the Parfum. The Parfum is good as well. So Terre d'Hermes from 2006 uh, at number seven. Number six is a discontinued fragrance from the house of Victor and Rolf. The best Victor and Rolf fragrance as far as I'm concerned. This is called Antidote. And Antidote is the antidote for the boring men's fragrance. Um, and I actually really like Antidote because Antidote gives me a lot to smell. It goes in a lot of different directions. So what's crazy about Antidote is Antidote um, has facets of just about every fragrance you can think about. Uh, and that's why it's supposed to be the cure for the boring fragrance because it has everything. I mean, it's got a green minty opening, which I just got off of the strip. It's got spicy cardamom and, and citruses, grapefruit, bergamot, and mandarin orange. It's got lavender, so there's a little throwback traditional masculine lavender. It's got cinnamon, the warmth of cinnamon and nutmeg and spices come through. It's got florals, orange blossom, violet, Freesia, geranium. Um, it has woody notes in the base like cedar, guyac wood, and sandalwood. It has musky notes, white musk. It has leather. It has iris. It has labdanum. It has tonka bean. It has vanilla. It has amber. And it has patchouli. It literally has just about everything. Um, the only thing it really doesn't have is big animalic notes. You know, there's no castorium, no uh, civet, no hy hyrax or anything like that. But it has so many different types of fragrance notes, different kinds of fragrances that you would think this fragrance is being pulled in all of these different directions. And sometimes when you wear it, you know, this is a temperamental fragrance for the most part. This fragrance sort of, um, sometimes when you wear it, you get more of the floral. Sometimes when you wear it, you get more of the iris. Sometimes you get more of the minty citrusy aspect. Sometimes you get more leather. Sometimes you get more woods, uh, more vanilla, more sweetness, less sweetness. It goes all over the place, but uh, Antidote is an amazing designer. Sometimes it feels soapy even, uh, like Prada Amber Porum, because of the orange blossom, I think. But, you know, it, um, it, it, it's kind of everywhere, and yet, for a designer, very complex. Uh, and most people, I think, they smell it and they go, ah, oh, this is just a boring citrus, or just a boring minty citrus, or it's just a floral fragrance for men or it's just a spicy fragrance, or it's just a leather, or it's just a, just a little bit of woods, you know, and they don't give it a chance to do all of the amazing things that it does. Um, so I'm a big fan of Antidote. I think it's the best Victor and Rolf, and it is discontinued, uh, believe it or not, and it's perfumed by one of my favorite perfumers of all time, Pierre Wargnay, who also made Hugo Boss Number no. 1, which got a vintage Hall of Fame review from me yesterday. So, uh, that's how it beat Tear. Uh, Tear and this were right there. But for me, I would take Antidote because it, it gives me more to smell. I, I like the fact there's a lot that it does. Um, 
Whereas tear, it feels like it almost disappears and goes away and comes back and other people can smell you, but you can't smell yourself. And I, I don't know. Um, I'm going Rich Mitch style on the hydration. Look at this fucking thing. Uh, this is like, and there's like time. So you're supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be here at 11 a.m. It's five. <laughs> I'm supposed to be all the way down here. Rich would be very disappointed in me. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. Okay. Next on the list is going to be a, a perfume from the great Bertrand Duchafour, La Tizan Parfumaire, which I'm waiting on some from Rich Mitch to show up one any day. God, I hope they can make make it across the ocean one day. I can't wait for it to arrive because there are other La Tizans in there that I need to add to the collection that were gifted to me by the great Natalia that have, you know, can't cross the ocean because we need someone, excuse me, to work as a mule. But um, one of my favorite La Tizans that's currently in my collection is this, and this is Anka. And I love Zonka. Love, love Zonka. I think it's um oh, I think it's I think it's one of Bertrand Duchafour's best, maybe even a masterpiece, because it does what he does so well, which is take a fragrance idea style and add these notes that you would never think should work. So there's a lychee blossom note in here. Um, which I'm starting to see like lychee fruits and stuff like that in the grocery stores here in Texas. So it's, it's starting to catch on even more, but you know, that milky sort of, it's a very distinctive, uh, there's fleshy like fruit, right? Lychee and, um, masala chai note is in here. Yes. Masala chai, uh, and vetiver. So there's a little bit of what he did with Timbuktu. But unlike Timbuktu, this goes in a different direction. He added a peony note, which he added in Diaman as well, cardamom. And then there's a beautiful iris. Again, iris is the note of 2006. Leather and papyrus. And so, you know, the magician, if you will, works with incense in a magical way. And that papyrus and frankincense gives it a little bit of this paper-like smokiness on top of the vetiver. Uh, and I think this is a more, like, I think this is more interesting than tear. It has the vetiver thing going on, but it's more interesting. And I said the same thing about Timbuktu. I'd rather wear Timbuktu and Zonka rather than, like, uh, Tear. Even though I think Tear is more, like, socially accepted, I would I would rather wear the, this. So Zonka it will get a full review from me, and it'll be a positive one. I'm a huge fan of Zonka. Um, okay, next on the list is going to be probably one of the greatest vetivers of all time at number four. And this is called Ankara Noir. So again, Nathalie Larson, just like with Inside Man, but this is her all by herself. And you can really feel the the style that she likes to use. Um, you know, there's this sort of peppery vetiviral acetate note in here. Cypress, bourbon vetiver, Haitian vetiver, cash, cashmeran. Again, cashmeran, just like an Inside Man. Cashmere wood with musk. And um, as far as like dark vetiver fragrances go, this is an inky vetiver. It's a dark vetiver. It is, um, that's why it's called Ancre Noir. This is supposed to look like an ink bottle, like from the old days where they would dip the pen in. Because vetiver can give off this inky, earthy quality, smoky as well. And it does that here. This is a dark, rooty, brooding vetiver, right? Um, this would be what, uh, I watched the Batman movie from 2002, sorry, from 2022, the, the emo Batman, if you will. Um, with what's his name from, from the, um, oh gosh, True Blood or whatever. I forgot what his name was. Uh, the guy that played the Batman in the movie last year, but I watched it finally for the first time yesterday and it was okay. I didn't really care for the emo skinny Batman. I feel like Batman needs some muscles, but, uh, it would be like putting me as Batman. You know, it just doesn't work. You need a bigger muscular guy. Um, but this would be like a perfect scent for the emo Batman. There's this brooding type scent, you know? Oh, I'm just going to stay in. Uh, the world hates me. But I I love this. Um, I, I think uh, vetiver, you know, vetiver can be a tough note for some people. But once you come around to it, man, it is absolutely amazing. Ancre Noir at number four. Number three, we have back-to-back -back Eldo fragrances, okay? So for me, this is a really tough one. Because I think that what Antoine Lee did with Eldo... It was like his breakthrough. Like, you know, after he made some of the things 
for um that 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 were popular in the early 2000s um oh gosh i forget attitude some of the other things that he made for like the designer houses and then he said screw this i'm not playing this game i want to do my own thing and he went to eldo and started creating these very creative perfumery uh and both of these fall into the category but uh, for me, one sits a little more to... I love them both, okay? But one just beats out the other. Uh, so at number three, we have Rien, which basically means nothing, which is crazy because this is like one of the biggest fragrances in existence. So um, it's when when someone asks you, what are you wearing? You're supposed to say nothing. But in reality, you're wearing like one of the heaviest fragrances known to man. This is frankincense, saffron, black pepper, leather, Oris Absolute, Cystus Absolute, patchouli or per tree moss vetiver or per um and it's very leathery sp spicy um rich mitch was saying that he heard someone say crystal maybe say that uh this is like setting band-aids on fire or something I, I i don't know but um I, there definitely is a little bit of an animalic chemical vibe but i love it i love when you have vetiver and leather together very similar to what happens in Gucci Guilty Absolute, but um, this is even crazier. Uh, I, I like these type of perfumes, so Rien is a total winner for me, but for, for my personal taste, there is something special when Antoine Lee harkens back to the past, you know? He did it with Les Abstraits' um, La De La Exquise, which adds a little hint of Antaeus, and he did it with Je Suisse Un Homme, which basically means I am man, and this is number two on the list from Eldo. Uh, this is discontinued, unfortunately. This is the vintage bottle. You can tell by the gunmetal cap and the extra raised lettering on the on the on the sticker. But um, just we soon own is oh god, you know. Um, some people compare this to Derby or Bellamy. So think about those two comparisons. Like how could you go wrong with either? I think it leans closer to Bellamy, but uh, there are some Derby touches in here as well. But it's uh, Myrtle. Lemon, bitter orange, bergamot, clove, cognac, cinnamon, animalic notes, leather, and patchouli. So imagine a Bellamy leather with a more modernized cognac touch in a, in the myrtle twist that you get in maybe like Derby, right? Um, brilliant, brilliant fragrance. Un cannot believe the best Eldo, in my opinion, and they discontinue it. I mean, fuckers, right? Um, so, but for me... This is my favorite Eldo of all time, so I would put this above anything. But Rien is very, very close, and Rien Intense Incense is also very, very close. I love these type of perfumes, but Je Suis Soon Homme, there's something special about it for me, because I love it when Antoine plays the breadcrumb game of leaving little hints to the past, and he did it here to perfection. So I think this is borderline masterpiece. And my kind of perfumery, this is the stuff I love to wear. If you like things like um, Etro's Goma, if you like those type of perfumes, I would urge you to try Je Suisse Un Homme. And finally, number one, and it's almost like there's no doubt. I mean, absolutely no doubt for me. Of all these amazing fragrances, I think this takes the cake. This is the fragrance that showcases the genius of Andy Tower, in my opinion. And no, it is not L'Air du Desert Marocain. It is Lone Star Memories. Lone Star Memories for me is um, a fragrance that is um, just such a perfect example of how fragrance can sort of transport you to somewhere else. So when I smell this, I smell the cowboy sitting by the fireplace who took his leather gun, gun belt off and put it to the side, you know. I smell the... Um, I smell the fire itself burning. I smell, oh my God, I saw. So instantly there's this like black burned quality, almost like that cowboy who took his gun hol holster off, right? And set it aside, fell asleep. But while he was making coffee, right? Or tea or something, and he burned the shit out of it. So he was so tired from working so hard. Calloused hands, remember my boss number one review? Calloused hands. He was a hard-working man, and um, he wanted to have some damn coffee. He put it on the fire and fell asleep because he was so beat from working all day. Wakes up, the shit's burnt, black to a crisp. Says, screw this, throws it out. Decides, you know what? I'm going to take a shower instead. 
grabs this geranium scented soap and washes himself down. And, um, but that black smokiness sort of slightly remains with this leatheriness. You know, he puts his cowboy hat back on, he gets back on his horse. You, um, you can almost see the picture in front of you. There's no iris in here, but there is carrot seed. And remember I told you iris was the scent of, of the sort of year, 2006. But carrot seed gives off a little bit of an irisy feel. So there's this posh feel to it all. It's almost like you're looking at the most picturesque landscape God could show you while, you know, being in the cowboy shoes, seeing it through his eyes. If you've ever read um, the, the uh, Dark Tower series by Stephen King, in one of the books, Roland, who's like the main character, wakes up through the eyes of a man on a plane. Now, Roland is from a different land. He's never been in a plane, right? So just imagine the unbelievable shock of being, seeing through someone else's eyes in a different world, looking out the window of a plane. And you've never been on a plane. You never even know what a plane is, right? Um, that's kind of the shock of this fragrance. There's just this, it's just, bam, just like you're transported to this other world. And you're like, wow, what is this, you know? Um, that leatheriness and then that, you know, quality of myrrh where that earthy, mushroomy myrrh quality comes through. And the labdanum in here is beautiful. It really almost feels like that sticky coffee just transported into labdanum. Like it just, you know, in some chemical miracle while the cowboy was sleeping, um, it, it was blessed and turned into, into labdanum, cystus labdanum. And it just has this sticky, thick, dense quality to it. And yet, the rest of the portrait landscape is just so beautiful. You can see the sunset. You can see the, that, um, fr you can smell the freshness of the green geranium. Masterpiece. Absolute masterpiece. I don't know how I'm going to review this. Because I, 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 I wrote a, a Fragrantica article on on it trying to say what I just said here I probably did better in the article actually but um but yes it um I love it absolutely love Lone Star Memories I think it's um I think it is um Andy Tower's best work and as much as I like Le du Desert Marocain and Accord du Desert and all that stuff for me Lone Star Memories is um is the one that really sort of highlights his genius best. So, um, so yes, that's my 2006 video. If you guys have experience with some of these, let me know what your favorites are. If you have experience with other fragrances from 2006, which I do not have in the collection, but I should have, do let me know. Let me know what you think. Love to hear your thoughts. Um, I know these videos go long, so I appreciate you all always watching and commenting and, and supporting me and um, you know, the back and forth in the comments always lifts my spirits. I love seeing your faces in the comments. Thank you for watching, everyone. Cheers, guys. Merry Christmas. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.